my role as a member of the city council is as a representative of the people of District B. Um, I want to be a voice of those people. Um, not so much a continuation of the status quo per se, a little bit I feel how the city council has gotten off over the last decade or two into more of a rubber stamping situation where the majority of the council may not actually know what's going on at all times or things are predetermined. It's rushed through really fast with the absolute minimal engagement by the public. And I'd, I'd like to turn that around and be a voice of the people for the people in city council. That's a huge number, and I don't think that I can uh, meet having experience with a number of that size, but I am <clears throat> a single father of three young kids, as I have been since October 4th of 2012, and uh, I'm a local business owner, or at least trying to get my business going um, good, actually here in downtown in District B. Um, managing my budget is about the best... Uh, experience I have um, when it comes to budgets but I think that it's you know all a matter of size and scale um, it certainly wouldn't stop me from being able to handle the job um, I think that the way to get it is obviously going to be that bond issue that nobody really wants to deal with and hopefully we can find a way around that i'm hoping with maybe a new mayor and you know a lot of new faces on council maybe we can find a way to reprioritize that 488 million dollars that we do have but to, to get after the roads i think are a, a big part of that infrastructure i mean it's obviously the most common besides the water system water and sewage system that uh, people seem to have you know, the biggest problem with and I, th I think it's noticeable to my friends that you know have moved away and occasionally come back to visit come back it's like man you know these roads still aren't fixed the things still it looks horrible driving into town driving into downtown on i-20 you know going through our old neighborhood stomping grounds where roads haven't been or even I mean even recovered in the asphalt which is really only a temporary fix just hasn't been done in my lifetime in some areas you know and uh, I would I would hope that we could get on that at least in our main thoroughfares and particularly coming into town to at least make it a little more appealing where you don't feel like you're getting beat to death in your vehicle. <laughs> That's a great question and I think it's one of the <clears throat> most important ones. Our economic development is probably on the top of everybody's list no matter what you're running for. As far as the city council we, you know, we're the legislators, we're the representatives of the people, so we need to look into maybe drawing back, repealing some burdensome and unnecessary regulations to encourage or at least incentivize or bring more, make it a little easier for our local businesses to expand or new businesses to grow. Maybe not quite so much of an emphasis on some super mega company from outside trying to bring them in and seduce them to be our savior. Wow, that's a tough question. Um, what would we implement to stop? Can you, can you repeat the actual part of the question As at the end? As a member of the, of the council, what controls or restrictions would you put on discretionary funding for nonprofits to prevent this from happening at the city level? I think that would ha probably have to be a an answer that comes up as a consensus. I'm not really sure I could answer that question besides um, you know working on the goals. I mean, I know that, that kind of targets somebody that ran in my district uh, last term. Um, particularly, but I, I don't think I'm quite in there with where um, we could use legislation to, or I don't have any ideas right out of the gate in this moment. Okay. But. I would thoroughly vet them. I would do my homework before we walk into like what I referred to earlier as one of these rubber stamp meetings where everything is predetermined and very lackadaisical laid back. I would 
I make all my decisions based that way. My studying, doing my homework, I understand it's a part-time job, but it's a full-time commitment to serve the people of this city and especially this district. I am absolutely 100% confident that I will take every, you know, every opportunity I can to study before we get in there. And then as these appointments come through, I may be the only voice during those times, but to actually ask questions that matter and, and to ensure that these are these people are, you know, vetted in public in the public meetings when they go through that process, but also getting down to it before we get that far. Well, I think uh, first and a good part is that I'm neither Republican nor Democrat, so that allows me to have a little more flexibility with um, who I can talk to in business and outside of business, you know, in the in the council and out. Um, I, I like to think that I've always had a, a knack for communicating with people in general, especially in, you know, one-on-one -on -one scenarios based on, you know, my reputation. It's just, you know, being an honest person, integrity first, and having a certain amount of respect there, you know, because I am what you get. And I like, I like to think that I can, you know, open other people up to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to let their you know, let them be themselves as well. Listen as much as I speak, but able to engage people of all demographics, ages, genders, party lines, those things. I believe those are my strengths. Well, I think the easy answer is crime, which is what most people go to. I personally believe that it's economic development because without opportunities to do things, that are not crime to make an honest living. Um, those those restrict people without without having the proper resources in you know every area of town for all people. We we're not we're not cultivating a workforce for you know just a plethora of jobs out there that you can that you can make a living working one job. You can either go out there and work three jobs to still be broke, or you can potentially go out there and engage in some illegal activity where money's a little easier and a little quicker. I believe with the some serious economic development, not just talking about it, but actual economic development, creating those opportunities where people can make a decision, say, well, I, I can make an honest living this way. It'll take a little work. I like to, I, I believe I have enough faith in humanity that people, more people would choose to make that living the right way than to, you know, and get engaged in a, in a life of crime very early on that only progresses in a snowball-like manner. Okay, multi parts there. Um, one of one of my biggest things, like a day one kind of thing, I want to immediately work towards getting city council meetings at least maybe one one a month. That's not at three o'clock and maybe potentially on a Saturday to increase the engagement, getting more people engaged in general and having them have that opportunity to have their voices heard, including bringing back verbatim minute keeping um, so that you know at least you can go back and review and, and know that your voice is being heard and documented. Um, engaging more people, they will hopefully take a, take a little bit more pride in their city for one, and then obviously getting back to economic development, we really, you know, we have to focus there because I believe that everything is intertwined into, you know, a strong economy um, for everybody creating opportunities. And um, was there another part to that question? I'm sorry. So top three priorities for the okay. council, and then how will you work to integrate those priorities into the council's agenda? Obviously, we would, uh, we would have to get into crime, but like I said, the economic development kind of plays the biggest role in crime including um, or like you said you know a, appointing the correct people into positions if that becomes in the next mayor should it be another police chief these things and, and addressing those issues and ensuring that we're um, paying our police enough and making sure that they're well trained enough for you know all scenarios and so that they're treating the people right and they're being treated right to kind of change that that stigma that we have right now that's um, probably not exactly help in our crime situation so if we can if we can get on top of those three focus with the focus obviously on the economic impact the economic development and then crime through the funding the police better better training 
and then again to community engagement to change the the overall the overall feeling this this feeling that you know like this is my town the way i was raised like in everything i do there's extensive pride in from my street my neighborhood to my city to my state to my country you know and i would hope that we could you know get back to something a little more like that with those three things Well, I have a really recent one. I'm not sure if I should share it right now. Uh, it, was a, it was a unique situation. There's limits to how much money we can take, which is one thing. But when um, a person approached me that said that a company was willing to offer um, a group of people to all donate the max to my campaign, suggested that winning and getting this seat on council they they believed that i had a strong chance of being there and they wanted to essentially offer me money with caveats and you know i had to nip it right there in the bud that there was you know there was no way that that was going to happen and um it's certainly it's it's hard raising money so when somebody comes you know offering you twenty thousand dollars to you know make a to make a vote in their favor it's certainly a violation of my ethic i mean it's a violation of ethics in general but beyond that i'm i'm sure that's probably happened in this city state and country more than once um but that was a, a very recent one that threw me off i certainly didn't expect that i didn't expect a lot of this when i decided to run <laughs> but that's uh it's what we have now I got the most awesome kids in the world. That's probably that's probably first and foremost. If I had them here, you know, if, if I could take them everywhere with me, I'd probably, you know, win in a landslide. Like, wow, you know, they're they're so awesome. They make me look good. <laughs> so if, if if I can bring these, you know, these, my my youngest three, these beautiful little girls who are just doing so great in school and everything they do, you know, in a single parent household. I mean, it's hard enough being a single parent, but then being a single dad, and not just of kids in general, but all girls. You know, it certainly, it certainly presents its, you know, issues and whatnot, but the pride I take in, in those little girls is something to really be proud of. It makes me look really good, and uh, if I could, you know, bring them in here. And they're in school, otherwise I might have tried to sneak them in here and get a little, get a little face time for them. But they're, but they're great, and uh, I mean, they're really, you know, the main motivating factor. I've thought about running before, but never really, never prepared for it. You know what I mean? I'm not a polished career politician haven't been preparing for this my whole life but i uh i feel like my whole life has prepared me for this opportunity so you know they're getting older not older i say older they're older to me you know about to be five six and seven years old but they're uh they're behind me and they're supporting me and they want me to do this and we're gonna do this and